Hello there, cryptid hunters. I'm sure you all have your favorite scary monster, like Mothman, aliens, or ghosts with glow sticks. Wait. And today, I'll be diving into some of these monsters' origins, histories, and what they really are. Like how Dwayne The Rock Johnson is actually just a collection of boulders glued together. Let's start with the well-known Loch Ness Monster. Uh, Rave, everyone knows that the famous picture of it was faked? Don't interrupt me. While it is known that this photo is faked, this was not the origin of the Great Nessie. That goes all the way back to 565 AD. Meet Saint Columba. One day he saw some guy just burying a dead dude and asked, So, uh, how'd he die? Allegedly, the man said the deceased was attacked by a river beast in the River Ness. Now, Columba can't just let a killing by a demonic beast go unpunished. So Columba then walked into the river, told the monster to come at me, bro, made a cross with his fingers, and the monster noped right out of there. And the beast was never seen again. Well, not until the 1900s. This is when a ton more reports of a beast just started popping up all over. I mean, Wikipedia is just full of them. The size of Nessie varies, but they usually are described as a blackfish or whale-like creature that bobs around the surface of the water. And yes, you're right that this could all just be explained by driftwood or eels or even otters. But why the sudden increase in sightings in the 1900s? It's not like there was just a monster staying hidden for hundreds of years, right? Well, no, because the actual reason is much simpler because the real cause is the invention of the motorboat. Uh, trust me, this will make sense. When a boat goes really fast, it makes ripples in the water's surface, and from a distance, it can look like something coming out of the water and back in. And what became more common in the 1900s? That's right, the motorboat. The human mind loves to be alert and on the watch for threats, and sometimes it just makes up threats that aren't really there. So just like Scooby-Doo taught us, the real monsters are boats. I mean, people. I mean, people in boats going really fast. Okay, moving on, in keeping with the water theme, next up we have the sea serpent. Tales of giant serpentine creatures in the ocean have been reported for centuries. Now, while the ocean certainly has some serpent-like monsters that are terrifying, looking at you, oarfish, none are big enough or near the surface enough to inspire the tales of these long, snake-like beasts gliding through the oceans. And we can't blame motorboats this time, because I'm pretty sure that those weren't invented back then. So what could they possibly be? Whales. They're whales. Trust me, this'll all make sense. Now I want you to imagine a whale coming up for air. You see the hump, right? Now imagine a whole bunch of whales popping up and down at different times. Kinda looks like a giant snake slithering through the waters. So a dehydrated sailor that hasn't eaten good food in multiple weeks, and might not be in the right state of mind, may not identify what they see as a pod of whales, but instead a big ol' sea serpent. Other explanations are giant squids or even fish like the oarfish, but I don't buy it. That's what the oarfish just wants you to think to make itself seem scarier than it already is. Yes, I have a fear of the ocean, and you should too. Look what's down there. There are monsters in the ocean, they are just not sea serpents. Okay, that's enough water, let's get back on land with the next monster in Point Pleasant, West Virginia. Fun fact, Virginia is more west than West Virginia. You're living a lie, West Virginia. Okay, back to the monsters. Point Pleasant is home to the Mothman. This winged, red-eyed creature was first reported in the 1960s and has since become a local legend, so much so that they have a statue of the fellow. Quite the looker, don't you think? And this monster doesn't just scare people. Oh, no, no, no. He supposedly destroyed a bridge. Ah, uh, yes, the moth's natural enemy, elevated road construction. On December 15, 1967, the silver bridge in the town tragically collapsed during rush hour. Many locals believe that the Mothman sightings, which were particularly frequent in the year leading up to the disaster, were a supernatural warning about the bridge's structural failure, and some even believed that the Mothman himself destroyed the bridge. So was this thing even real, and if not, what exactly was it? To answer this question, I first want you to look at this thing. And now look at a moth. Does this monster look like a moth to you? The answer is no, but you know what it does look like? An owl. That's right, the Mothman was just a big owl at night. People that saw the Mothman described it as gliding through the air without making a sound. You know what else can do that? That's right, an owl. Still don't believe me? 
Well, how about this? Mothman sightings stopped around the end of 1967, but why? Likely because a man named Asa Henry killed the Mothman. Around this time, Mr. Henry shot a two-foot-tall snowy owl with a five-foot wingspan, and then poof, no more Mothman sightings. That, or maybe he flew off to find more bridges to destroy. Next up is the Flatwoods Monster. Any guesses where this one was seen? That's right, West Virginia. The lesson from this video is do not go to West Virginia. Way too many monsters. Now, the Flatwoods Monster is a creepy alien-like entity, reportedly seen in 1952 in Flatwoods, West Virginia, hence the name. Witnesses described a towering figure with glowing red eyes, a strange metallic appearance, claws, and a weird cloth hood around its head, looking like an ace of spades. This monster was seen by two brothers, Edward and Fred May, on September 12, 1952, after spotting a strange light in the night sky, likely a meteor, or maybe aliens, I don't know, I wasn't there. The brothers went into the woods looking for where the light landed, and this is where they spotted the terrifying monster. Upon seeing the creatures, the brothers ran to go get others to see it. And a bit later on, they returned with a National Guard member, Eugene Lemon, who also saw a tall man-like creature with claws and a red face in a hood. So, was this a spooky alien or something else? Well, if you take a close look, you may notice that the Flatwoods monster looks similar to our friend the Mothman. That's right, I think that these creatures are one and the same. And by that, I mean that they're just both owls. I mean, really, the hood and the red eyes should be a dead giveaway. But owls don't wear skirts, you might be thinking. They are all nudist, as we all know, those sick owl freaks. Well, what if I was to tell you that that skirt was actually just a tree branch? That's right, imagine an owl just resting on a tree branch that just happens to be slightly broken and dangling. Yeah, yeah, I know that that's a bit of a stretch, but what's more likely, an alien visiting Earth just to scare a few people, or an owl on a messed up tree? I rest my case. Unless you still think it was an alien, in which case, believe whatever you want, I won't judge. Oh, and bonus fact, if you've ever played a little-known game called Majora's Mask, you may recognize the Flatwoods monster as the alien attacking Marin's ranch at the start of the second day. I don't really have a segue from this, so let's just go on to the next monster. This is the Jackalope and the Wolpertinger. No, you're not looking at the Pokemon evolutionary line of a rabbit. These are actual cryptids, with the Jackalope being a rabbit with antlers and the Wolpertinger being the same, but with fangs and wings. The jackalope are said to be found in North America and are even Wyoming's official mythical creature. I didn't even know that that was a thing states could have. I moved to have West Virginia's state creature become the Mothman holding hands with the Flatwoods monster. They make a great couple. Okay, enough about them now, I promise. Horned rabbits originate all the way back to Persia in the 13th century and have tales back to medieval Europe as well, which makes sense because the Wolpertinger comes from German folklore. So is there some rare breed of rabbit that has spread all across the globe that has horns and sometimes wings? Well, contrary to what that back alley taxidermist says, the answer is no. These rabbits are not blessed with wings and horns, but cursed with a virus. Introducing the Shope papilloma virus. This bad boy infects certain rabbits and causes keratinous carcinomas to grow near the head of the infected, which is a fancy way of saying that they have big tumors. I bet it was a lot cuter when you thought these things just had horns, huh? So what likely happened is people all around the world just saw rabbits suffering from the virus and interpreted it in similar ways. That or taxidermists really did just make this up. Last on our list is the salamander. Now I don't mean your common everyday salamander, no no no. I'm talking about the fire salamander, but not the real life salamander that just happens to also be named the fire salamander, that one's real. If you've ever played a fantasy game like Demon's Souls or Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban on the PC, you may be familiar with them. In folklore, salamanders are connected with the element of flame, and in some cases considered to be born from the blazing heat itself. Which is odd, right? Because they're amphibians, and they need to stay nice and wet, like how your mom was with me last night. So why did people of old connect them with fire? Were they dumb? Well, yes. When people are cold, they'll burn logs in a fire. And you know what sleeps in logs? That's right, salamanders. 
Once the logs are set alight, the salamanders would rush out of the logs, sometimes on fire themselves, and this led to some people believing that salamanders are birthed from flames. Which is kind of weird. Like, if I set someone's home on fire in Stockholm, California on August 15th, 1989, and people ran out of the burning mass, I wouldn't assume that they're fire people. That's just crazy. Especially since that house was uninhabited. And that's the simple origin of the fire salamander. And also, the inspiration for Charmander and the flame-loving salamanders from Warhammer 40k. Well, that's all the time that we have for ruining the magic of real-life monsters. But if you have other monsters that you want me to talk about in the future, just let me know down in the comments below. So remember, my dear viewer, monsters are real. They're just not aliens or mothmen or slimy, slithering creatures. But instead, we're the monsters. I mean, have you seen some of the messed up stuff we've done to each other or created? Scary stuff! But anyways, remember to like, subscribe, and stay awesome, y'all.